Hi guys, welcome to K9 TV. Uh, today's episode is called Who Learned Last? Um, first of all, a little bit of an apology for uh, um, starting about 15 minutes late. Uh, just had a couple of little uh, internet hiccups here. Um, but yeah, all ready to rock and roll. So um, as I said, tonight's episode about is about who learnt last. And the reason I've called it who learnt last is at the moment I'm in, uh, I'm in Sydney. So uh, but, uh, Pet Resorts Australia, uh, they're an awesome boarding facility um, and I'm at their Dural um, facility here and uh, they're certainly uh, doing trumps with uh, not only not only with the boarding facility but also um, hosting seminars and things like that. So one of the things that I absolutely love um, is always making sure that my information is, is um, being updated, that my... my knowledge, skill set and all of those things are, are always the best that they could possibly be, um, which is what obviously has inspired um, tonight's live posting um, about who learnt last. So um, the reason that I've called it that is uh, obviously we all have mentors or we have a trainer, we have someone that, that sits there and helps us in our, in our job training, uh, let alone every other uh, aspect and facet in our life. Um, and I was sitting there and, and you know, this is one of multiple uh, seminars I've attended this year um, and I've, I've always uh, tried to you know at least attend one seminar per year and I've been doing this now for working with dogs for roughly 11 years now and I absolutely love it and I want to make sure that my information and my knowledge is always you know where it, where it should be and 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 that's you know at the, at the top of the game is you know as best that I can possibly make it and, and it's my responsibility to gain access to that information um, particularly when not only am I responsible for my own dog, uh, but I'm responsible for, you know, a lot of my clients' dogs as well. And they entrust me with the care of their, their dogs. They entrust me with the knowledge that I'm sharing with them. So I have that responsibility to make sure that, you know, I'm up to speed as best I possibly can be with uh, not only the science, but if there's better techniques. And, and as with any industry, we're always evolving. So that's one thing that I'm really proud with uh, with the canine company. Um, all of our trainers are always updating their skills, attending seminars. Um, we quite often will run, um, you know, kind of our in-house, um, you know, workshops and things like that. So we're always wanting to make sure that, you know, you guys are getting the absolute best. Um, and coming up to Sydney, we call it our home away from home up here. We uh, we attend some of the, the most... Uh, our favourite seminars, if you would, uh, with Pet Resorts Australia here in Dural. Um, and it's really nice for us. We hang out with uh, people from all over Australia that, you know, share the same philosophy where they're, you know, always updating their information, they're learning new techniques and, and you know, what how they could certainly, you know, improve, you know, one technique or another or, you know, it doesn't matter if it's just one little iota um, of knowledge that you take away, uh, it's the dogs ultimately that are going to benefit. So it's important, I, in my opinion, that as people we get our egos out of the way and, and understand that, hey, you know, maybe there's a, there's a better way to do it. Maybe I can upgrade, you know, my knowledge, my teachings, my techniques. Um, guys, make sure you say hello. I'd love to see some thumbs up. Um, I know that uh, you're starting to log in, so thank you very much. Um, so the reason um, Who Learned Last as a title was because what, one of the things that I've actually found quite disappointing is the lack of, uh, there's, there, there are a certain lack of uh, further knowledge when it comes to dog training. There have been people in the industry that have been around for many, many years. Thanks, you. I can see a thumb up there. You're starting to join in. Hi, Diamond. Thank you. Um, there are certain people, you know, uh, or faces missing from seminars and, um, you know, they, they may be saying that they've, you know, trained dogs for multiple, multiple years, but when was the last time they updated their knowledge? And I think that, that that's a bit of a letdown, um, for you if you're, you're a dog owner and, and you're attending, you know, classes and you're trying to, you know, uh, improve the relationship and, and the communication skill set that you have with your dog. I know in the last 12 months I've learned a phenomenal amount and again and I will continue to learn always um I had a gentleman come up to me quite a while ago and uh he said uh, that he'd been training dogs for 50 years and he was quite proud of that and we had a difference of opinion in, in regards to a particular technique and whether um you know you can it was mainly about using food rewards, if you would. And, um, you know, his excuse was that he'd been doing it for 50-odd years. 
And I just think that's really sad. And, and it's like, when was the last time, you know, that you updated your information? Because there's certainly more than one way to, you know, to approach dog training. And yeah, food, food training may not work for every single dog, but, um, you know, we need to be open, open to it. When we're talk, talking about reward systems for our dogs, we are the only ones that can sit there. Uh, sorry, our dogs, I should say. Our dogs are the only ones that can sit there and um, decipher what they perceive as a reward. Now, I know that I've spoken about this in previous episodes of Canine TV. Um, just because you particularly like something doesn't necessarily mean that your best friend or your husband, your wife, your partner, etc., will think that it's equally rewarding. Um, Brent and I uh, often sit there and have a giggle because he loves Turkish delights and I think they're disgusting. So, um, you know, a reward system and a reward is purely in perception of your dog. So to sit there and think that you're not going to be rewarding your dog with food because it doesn't mix with your ideologies, you don't like using it, um, that's fine. But at least identify the reasons as to why you, you choose not to use it. Don't sit there and say that it shouldn't be used. Um, so that's one aspect of it. You know, when was the last time your dog trainer actually furthered their knowledge? Because as I was saying, there's some fabulous people um, you know, all throughout Australia and the world that are continuously networking, keeping the conversation open um, because our, our genuine interest is in the betterment of the dog. So um, now that we're coming into puppy season, I quite often get asked, you know, what should I be looking for in a dog trainer? And I think, you know, that to me would be one of the most important questions. Not necessarily, um, I think qualifications are, are quite important, but I know that there's people that uh, are absolutely fabulous dog trainers that may not have um, you know, a, a certain certificate or, or a level of qualification. But you want to be asking, you know, when was the last time that, you know, you actually, you know, upgraded your knowledge? Because if your knowledge is 50 years old, you know, you could almost bow your head in, well, you should, in my opinion, bow your head in shame if that's what you're sticking with and you think that that is the, still exactly the same way, exactly what was happening 50 years ago. Your GP would have told you to take up smoking to alleviate stress. Um, you know, as, as with most professions, we should be absolutely updating our skills. I also sit there and, 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 you know, suggest to you guys, you know, when was the last time you went out and learned something different or, you know, just even, um, reading different books or, or contacting a mentor or exploring different options. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to take that on board or, or, you know, adapt those methodologies, but certainly understanding and, and, and being open to it is really, really important. Um, I think a lot of the times, uh, it's our dogs that learnt the last, you know, they were, they were the ones that, and when I say last, I'm talking about most recent. So, you know, a lot of the times we're sitting there and we're teaching our dogs, let's say we're teaching them to drop or down. We teach them to sit, to come. We might teach them to heal, to target, you know, all of these weird and wonderful things that we can teach them. But at the same point, you know, is there something that we could be doing better? So, you know, my boy Zuka, he's six years of age and my training has evolved immensely. And a lot of that, you know, I owe to him. Um, I certainly owe it to my, my peers and my mentors, but ultimately it comes down to my responsibility as it does come down to yours. Thank you very much for the thumbs up. Um, it comes down to your responsibility as well uh, to make sure that you're, you're getting out there and, and not just, um, you know, sitting and thinking, oh, well, I've done this for the last 10 years, so it's going to work, you know, just as well with my new puppy. Always be evolving, always learning, and, and they're the most exciting things when it comes to dog training. Um, I should have say life, really. Um, my One of my mentors, Glenn Cook, um, he's a great bloke. He actually manages Pet Resorts Australia. Um, I was listening to a podcast he did uh, with, um, with a couple of blokes from the US, Josh Moran, um, and really enjoyed it. Josh Moran is also, uh, you know, a top-notch dog trainer in the sense that he's always, you know, updating his, his knowledge as well. So hey to you, buddy, when you see this and your lovely, lovely lady Jess. Um, so during their podcast, uh, one of the things they were talking about, um, I think their podcast is called Man Men, uh, Mad Men and Philosophers. Um, and Cookie turned around and said, bear with me as I'm just reading it here, the wolf that's climbing the hill is hungrier than the wolf that's on top of the hill. So if you look at that as, as the metaphor, um, you know, just because potentially, say you've been training dogs for 50, 50 years, you're at the top of the hill and you think, yep, you know, I've got all this expertise and experience you know, under my belt due to, due to the time that you've put in, 
Um, there are so many, so many other people that are that are climbing the the mountain, if you would, climbing that hill. So eager, they're like a sponge. They're they're taking information from any source that they can. Um, they filter the um, the practical to the impractical, from the ide ideologists to to, to the nitty gritty of it. Um, and that's something that I think is is really commendable for for any trainer that goes out there and just constantly seeks how to improve themselves, not only as an individual but also um, as a professional, uh, a lot of us will sit there and say that this is an art. It's a craft. Um, as I said before, the way that I train um, dogs now is completely different to what it was, you know, six years ago. And then prior to that, when I had my other rots, um, I'm a Rottweiler girl, for those of you that don't know, um, you know, my training technique has, has evolved since then. And um, it's a bit like the, the dinosaur um, principle of life if you don't evolve you're going to die unfortunately so I think you know no matter what level you are whether you're just you know getting yourself a little pup and and you just want a best mate or um, you're trying to get into the the dog training world a little bit more seriously with your dog you want to become a dog trainer all of those types of things and I think again you can adapt this to any aspect of your life um, make sure that you know you're constantly learning and aspiring to to be better because what you learned yesterday you know, may certainly have evolved there may be better techniques um, I was sitting in a seminar today um, for oh, probably about you know, a couple of hours or whatnot. And uh, by the time my flight arrived, I unfortunately missed out on the morning part. But, you know, there's all, always something you can learn from a seminar or a workshop or hanging out with mentors and like-minded people. So, um, guys, hopefully, uh, you know, this is, this is you know, get some get some uh, cogs turning and, and sit there. And as you're, as you're looking for a dog trainer, ask them, when was the last time you, you went to a seminar? What seminar was, you know, was it? Who ran it? What was it about? You know, what was your learning? I always like to sit there and, and uh, you know, kind of I'll sit there and say, you know, how old is your knowledge? Because, um, you know, you want to make sure that as the best that you possibly can uh, sit there and, and keep yourself updated and, and continue learning. So, a huge shout out to everybody that I know that's uh, making huge efforts to continue to improve their knowledge no matter um, how it is, whether it's uh, with us up here in, in, uh, in Sydney at Pet Resorts um, or, you know, via um, Facebook, social media, reading, the internet, you know, absolutely put yourself out there, guys, and, and keep learning. Ask more questions. There's no such thing as the silly questions. There's just the bloody idiots that go home without the information because... They were too egotistical to ask the question, and that may be because they're embarrassed. They might think that it's a silly question. Um, but, guys, if you don't have the answer, that's the silliest thing of all. So, um, yeah, go out, have fun, meet people. And uh, for those of you that are coming up to uh, to Dura for the weekend, I can't wait to see you all. Make sure you say hi and uh, take care, guys, and we'll see you next week. Thanks so much. Bye.